Howdy YouTubers, it's Nick again. Uh, we're going to do another uh, tour of the uh, Spectrum uh, in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, Post-transition, now that the uh, DTV transition has been fully realized, uh, we'll take a look at what the bands look like now. Uh, we're starting out at a center of 174 megahertz. That's going to be, uh, excuse me, a center of 177 megahertz. The bottom end is 174. That's channel 7. So this is KGO. You can see the little peak right over here. That is their ATSC pilot. Uh, they are currently the lowest frequency uh, broadcaster in the Bay Area. Um, there are a couple of uh, construction permits out there in the FCC database. One for KTVJ on channel 4. Uh, another potential uh, one in uh, the Saratoga foothills on channel 3, uh, but that one has options. We'll have to see how that turns out. Uh, but KTVJ is the most likely uh, candidate for the low spot once they uh, get their stuff built. Uh, so this is KGO. You can see there's a little bit of a warp to it. That's probably multipath. Probably because my antenna is pointed at Fremont Peak to try and capture uh, KSBW and KCBA whenever they're possible. I have to rejigger that antenna though because they're not coming in. I was really hoping that uh, the loss of KXTV and... Uh, KOVR would fix uh, KSBW and KCBA, but alas, no. They come in better now when they come in, but there are times when they don't come in. So I might have to rejigger my antennas a little bit. But you can see that that's, because the antenna is uh, facing exactly 180 degrees the wrong way, that's why there's a little bit of multipath on KGO. So we'll move up from there. Uh, we will move to uh, channel 11 which is uh, 198 plus 3 is um, uh, 202. Uh, probably 201. Shows you my math skills. Yep, sure enough. This is uh, KNTV Analog's nightlight service. Um, KNTV, I actually fibbed a little bit when I said that... Uh, KGO was the lowest frequency broadcaster. KCRA is actually still on the air. Uh, they're doing nightlight service as well. Uh, but they're awfully hard to pick up, and uh, it's just nightlight anyway. They'll be gone in two weeks. Uh, this is KNTV's nightlight service. You can see it is uh, NTSC. I've slowed down the, the, um, uh, the, the, sw the sweep a little bit to try and uh, pick up more of the peaks, if I can, of the uh, ATSC channels as they come in. You can see, uh, as usual, this is one of the, the last uh, remaining NTSC channels that you're going to see. Uh, get used to it while you can. There is the video peak, there is the chroma peak, and there is the FM audio. Um, a dying breed, to be sure. Uh, okay, so that's uh, 201. We'll now move up to channel 12. And that is KNTV's digital side on channel 12. Uh, in the last video I took, they had a kind of a slope to them. They still have a little bit, but it's not quite as bad. But again, that's also caused by the fact that uh, the antenna is pointing 180 degrees the wrong way from San Bruno. Uh, next, let's go up to channel 14. 473. Here we go. That is, uh, this is interesting, um, a little bit of history here. Uh, Channel 14, uh, once upon a time, was uh, KCSM. Now, that was a very long time ago. KCM, KCSM originally came up on Channel 14, and KDTV uh, was on Channel 60. And back then, it was very difficult, even much more difficult than it even is today, to generate power at high UHF. And also, you had a distinct lack of receiver sensitivity the higher frequency you went. So the owners of KDTV uh, made a deal with KCSM. They said, we'll trade you uh, our uh, broadcast facility on top of uh, Mount San Bruno and our full-color transmitter and full-color uh, gear uh, if you'll move up to Channel 60 and we can take over Channel 14. So in fact, that's what they did. That's how KCSM wound up on Mount San Bruno uh, in their analog at Channel 60 uh, all those years. Uh, and KDTV wound up on Channel 14. Uh, 
the irony is that with the digital transition, uh, KDTV went from channel 14 on their analog side to channel 51, which is the very last channel on the top end of the band. So uh, KDTV is really ping pong. They've gone from the high to the low to the high of the UHF band again. Uh, but anyway, uh, channel 14 is occupied by KTNC. Uh, they are um, transmitting. They're now the last television broadcaster on top of Mount Diablo. Uh, Mount Diablo is a, a, a difficult mountain to transmit from because of environmental concerns. Um, they have a little tiny shack up there that's about the size of the transmitter. Uh, in fact, I read somewhere once upon a time that uh, there actually was no room for a human being inside the shack. When you're actually making adjustments to the transmitter, you're actually standing outside of the thing. Um, but uh, their problem was that um, they only had room for the one transmitter, so they couldn't actually have a pre-transition and post-transition transmitter set up the way a lot of uh, stations did. Um, and their final allocation on channel 14 was being occupied by KDTV's analog side, so they couldn't just transition immediately to their post-transition facilities. So they chose to do pre-transition uh, on channel 60 or 63 or something, whatever it was, uh, all the way up until the transition, and then they were going to switch that transmitter over to channel 14. Uh, so they turned that pre-transition -trans transmitter off in January uh, and told the world, well, okay, we're going to make our adjustments, and then we'll be ready on February the 17th for, um, for the transition on channel 14. And then Obama pushed it back. So They've actually been off the air on the digital side for, uh, you know, all those months between February and now. Uh, and they've been analog only. Um, and they really didn't have any choice in the matter because they could only put one transmitter in that facility. And they had already rejiggered it to be the post-transition one. They didn't want to have to do it back again. Uh, but they're up now. Um, they're not booming in, uh, but they're certainly receivable. Um, you know, I get about a 70% signal from them, and they're not dropping out at all, so they're coming in really nicely. Now, uh, between channels 15 and 18 in the San Francisco Bay Area, there is no television. Uh, those frequencies are actually not allocated to TV in the Bay Area because channels um, uh, 16 and 17 uh, are allocated to Landmobile. Uh, taxi cabs and firefighters and, and uh, police cars, oh my. Uh, so there's, there's nothing to see there. Uh, and channels uh, 15 and 18 are a guard band. So they're unavailable to television, uh, but they, they don't have any land mobile in them. They're just their empty space to uh, keep the two away from each other, specifically to keep the taxi cabs out of your television if you are in, this, in the city of San Francisco. Uh, if you go 100 miles away, you find uh, TV stations on there, but the, certain big metropolitan areas um, had those channels deallocated from TV. <clears throat> so our next television station is actually uh, KOFY TV uh, on channel 19, so let's go there. Boom! They are coming in quite nicely, aren't they? Uh, they're very strong. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, Sutro Tower, and uh, nice and flat on top. The 4228 on the roof is actually slightly off of axis for San Bruno and Sutro in my attempt to pick up KRCB, which we'll see in a minute, which mostly works. Actually, KRCB is coming in pretty well these days. Uh, 20 and 21 are empty, so 22 is our next port of call. 5... This is KAXT, um, Class A. This is a relatively weak-looking NTSC signal. These guys are a low-power broadcaster, so they don't they didn't transition last week. Um, they have an indefinite time frame to transition, but I suspect they'll be transitioning sooner rather than later. Um, they're coming in off the side of the UHF antenna, so there's lots of multipath, and it kind of looks bad. Um, not sure what's going to happen with them. They have a couple of construction permits up. Uh, one of them is on uh, Mount San Bruno with a highly directional beam aimed down to their service area here in Santa Clara, San Jose. Uh, other options that they have are to uh, flash cut over to digital. If they do that, the multipath might kill them for me. 
Although they're a Spanish language religious broadcaster, which is sort of a double whammy as far as I'm concerned. Um, anyway, they used to be co-channel with KRCB's analog, but they're actually coming in better now, of course, now that they don't have to fight to the death with uh, KRCB. Speaking of, that is our next port of call. Uh, 527. Whoops. Oh, what have I done? All right. Nick's an idiot. Uh, all right, so that's uh, KRCB. Uh, you can see they're coming in pretty well. Um, I actually had readjusted the span somehow. I pushed the wrong button on the spectrum analyzer before. Uh, those of you watching will probably be able to watch the video and say, oh, yeah, you hit the wrong button there, doofus. Uh, anyway, that's KRCB. Uh, they look pretty good. The noise floor is a little bit different than it was. Um, just for comparison, that's an empty channel. Um, you can see they're up a little bit from the noise, though, and, and that's a good usable signal for me. Okay. So we'll just shift up manually a little bit. There we are. That's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 550. Yeah, that's, uh, that's channel 27. So, Uh, that's uh, channel 27. Um, I don't even know who that is. It used to be uh, ABC, but somebody took it over. Who took it over? I don't know. I think it's coming from Sutro. Um, anyway, they're nice and nice and strong. Uh, channel 28 should also be allocated here. Oh, no, Channel 28, yes, they're KFTL, KFTL from Mount San Bruno. Um, this is yet another low-power analog broadcaster. Um, since they're on uh, Mount San Bruno, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're actually coming in just fine. Um, you can see the chrome peak there, as well as the analog and FM audio. And then uh, 29, that probably, if I'm not mistaken, is KPIX. 563. Yep, nice and strong as before. And then channel 30 is KQED. Not much difference there. Uh, 31, I think, is empty. 32 is the old KMTP. 33 is KMTP. Uh, 587. KMTP is a little weird. Um, they have a full carrier up, and their, their channel is good. Uh, but they're putting up slides that should have uh, technical difficulties written all over them. They, they have... Uh, there's some problem they have in their uplink from their studio to the transmitter. So if you go tune in channel 33, you see all of the sub-channels but they all just have a slide on there that says that we're having problems. So, I wonder how long that's going to last. Anywho, uh, I'm going to skip up a little bit. We're going to go to channel 38, uh, which is uh, KRON 617. And look how nice and strong that is. They used to really, really be terrible when they were on channel 57. I don't know, there's some multipath situation with the high 50s around here that was causing me a lot of grief. But KRON and KTVU, ironically now, are among the strongest channels coming in. Uh, totally flat top, absolutely perfect reception. Just for comparison, here's KTVU. That's uh, 653. Oops. Ah. Oh, come on. There we go. That's KTVU. Uh, they're coming in really good. 
and then by comparison, if we uh, go up three, go up six from that, that is a KBCW. Um, they're coming in almost as good as KTVU, but uh, KTVU is coming in even better. Um, moving up to the top of the band, we'll do the top three channels. Those are coming from uh, Mount Allison and Monument Peak sort of the quad up there. There's uh, KICU on 36, and then KDTV, KFSF, and uh, KTEH are 49, 50, and 51, uh, rounding out the top end of UHF. So, there's 49. Uh, that is KFSF, I believe. And then uh, add 6 to that. 689. That's 50. That's KTEH. And then uh, 692, 695. And that's KDTV. So I guess the takeaway from all this is that. Um, they don't look very interesting anymore. None of these uh, signals really do. They're just flat-topped white noise with little tiny ATSC pilots sticking up from the bottom end. Uh, but you can look at them and see whether they have multipath or not, at least. Um, you can see what's going on here. KDTV um, has a little bit of multipath because they're coming in off the side of the UHF antenna. And um, they're coming in from Mount Allison and Monument Peak, so they, they're very, very strong. When you have a strong signal that's off-axis, you're going to pick up the reflections uh, quite a bit more than if it was either a weak or if it was on-axis. So that's why there's a little bit of multipath, but they're so strong, they're coming in just fine. And that mostly is the case around here. If you live in the South Bay, like anywhere in Santa Clara County, at least northern Santa Clara County, really your best bet is to just take a uh, UHF high VHF antenna and aim it directly at Monument Peak, or excuse me, at uh, Mount San Bruno and, and Sutro Tower. For most places in the South Bay, Sutro and, and San Bruno are going to sort of be in the same basic direction, at least close enough to score. And then uh, you can get Monument Peak and Mount Allison off the side, uh, and that's all you need. Um, you know, I'm trying to get KRCB, KCBA, and KSBW, and those are sort of extra credit channels. Uh, but, you know, if you're not really driven to try and pick those up, uh, you don't need to try too hard. So, there you go. That, that's a little tour of the San Francisco post-transition TV spectrum. See you later.